Hey, welcome back y'all. Listen, thanks for joining with me. In this week's video, I'm gonna be talking about three categories of strategies to survive and thrive through Depo. Yes, the RCMP's Training Academy. I've got some tips, don't go anywhere. It's coming right now. Shall we begin? Hey y'all, thanks for sticking around. So the three categories that I'm going to be talking about are the before, the during, and the after depot experience. So uh, I'd like to break each category into a couple of subcategories. And I know you start hearing those terms and you're like, oh, okay, I'm out. Listen, stick around. Trust me, it's going to be well worth it. So the first is before depot. You get the call. Yeah, that call. I'll never forget the call. I was sitting in alone in my office at my desk. The phone rings and my recruiter says, Steve, are you sitting down? I said, yeah, and she, she went ahead and gave me the news, and I think I did a happy dance and maybe a happy run. I don't know. Speaking of running, that's a good segue. Why? Because before depot, the first of three that I'm going to give you within the before category is running. Yes, number one, running. You think, well, did I run enough yet before? No, the answer is no, you have not run enough. But Steve, I run X kilometers per week. Still not enough. Listen, tip number one inside of the before depot is run, run, run. And when you think you've ran enough, Run a little bit more because at depot, you're going to be running. And so you do not want that to be a weakness. It was in mind. I'm speaking from experience. I hated running. I thought it was the most boring thing in the world. I've come to terms with it. I still don't like it and it doesn't like me. However, it's very valuable, not just in depot, of course, but in the real world. So tip number one inside of the before is run and run some more. Okay, so the second tip inside of the uh, before depot strategy. You've got to learn about Depo. Do your due diligence. You've tuned into this channel, that's a good start. But do your due diligence and search around online. Ask some, some member friends if you have them. What is it like uh, to, to be in Depo? However, uh, don't let, like a, like a bad review of a movie, right? Don't let someone's uh, jaded or skewed experience kind of come across and try to grab onto you because we all have our own experiences. We all have some great ones. We all have some horrible ones. It depends on how you how you look at things. It's your perspective. For me, I enjoyed Depo after five weeks or so. And by the way, if you haven't checked it out, I'll link it in the description. I talk about my experiences at Depo, so you can check that out. But for me, the first five or six weeks was pretty tough. But after that, it got a lot of fun and I understood what it was to learn and absorb everything that Depo has. So uh, tip number two, do some due diligence, research, try to learn all you can about depot before you even get there. So tip number three inside of the before category is this. Try to get all of your stuff in order before you go. I'm talking about your finances. Yes, there is a there is an allowance that, that, that the RCMP pays the cadets. Uh, you have to find out how much that is. Uh, you have to get to so make sure your finances are in order because if your bills are astronomical and you have a mortgage to pay or if you have phone bills, whatever their bills are, you have to understand what the pay is or the allowance is at depot. You also have to understand that you are not having to pay for depot which is a great thing by the way you don't have to pay for your room and board is kind of covered the food is covered great food uh, so but get everything at home everything in your personal life especially your finances get those things all in order say you know say your goodbyes to people like you need to uh, think about and get yourself m mentally prepared about being posted anywhere in Canada yes anywhere in Canada get those things sort of situated and sorted out before you even get there because once you get to depot you're not going to want to think about back home you're going to want to make sure that everything back home is set in such a way that's going to make you comfortable and confident as you move move towards that depot departure. So on to category number two. This is the during depot. So we just looked at kind of a few things what to do before. This is about during your depot experience. Yeah, like 26 weeks you are at depot. It is a world unto itself and uh, it's an experience like no other. So first, uh, first tip is going to be this. Uh, you will have a big brother troop assigned to you. Yeah, these guys and gals will help you get sorted out in your first few days, your first couple of weeks, because it's sort of a chaotic time. You don't know where to go. You don't know where to, where to step on. You don't know who to talk to, how to salute, march. None of that stuff, but your big brother troop is there to help, and they will set up a time for you to go to Walmart or a, a big box store type of thing where in the beginning of your of your stay, you'll need a few things like totes and, and Rubbermaid things. Maybe you'll need some uh, writing utensils, some notebooks. Uh, maybe you'll need some uh, laundry detergent, toothpaste, whatever, whatever that you're going to need for basically living, apart from the food, of course, but don't forget a good snack. Uh, you'll, you'll have that chance to go to like a Walmart and pick up those things, so you will have 
the Big Brother troop. I, so the tip is to ask them. Ask them all the, all the things that you can. Uh, figure out what it is that's, go, that's gonna make your stay, especially in the beginning stages of Depo, uh, be a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more making sense so that you can kind of, again, confidently walk through each and every day. They are there for your benefit. So don't be afraid to ask them. Second tip is gonna, uh, is gonna say this. Uh, learn to be a time manager. Manage your time effectively because you have very limited time. So what does that mean? Well, listen, your day is kind of a, uh, you're gonna be waking up probably between five and 6 a.m. and you're not gonna be going to bed till about 10, 11 p.m. However, in that time, there are uh, very scheduled, by the RCMP depot, there are very scheduled time slots that you will need to be in certain places doing certain things. However, outside of your regular eight to 4.30 schedule, that is when you are responsible for your own time. So if you have boots to polish, if you have uh, tasks to do, if you have things to learn, if you have notes to write, files to work on, hair to cut, thing, places to run, workouts to be had, all those things are on you and in your time. So learn to manage your time effectively. If you're sitting around in your pit, which is by the way where we kind of, uh, what we call where we sleep and kind of live while we're at our dorms, if you're sitting around and think, man, I've got nothing to do, this is just a good day, I'm sitting and relaxing, and and it's within your first few weeks of depot, I'm telling you, you're probably missing something because you won't have a lot of time to sit around and ponder. So be a good time manager. Um, learn to do things like button and button, unbutton your shirts, like when you're going kind of to and from, say like a PT class or a P, you know, PDT, whatever you're going to and through, uh, learn to do things on the fly because it's gonna pay you in dividends. Those few seconds that you can gain on simply you know, doing up your boots quicker or getting your hat on and, and straight a little sooner. And help each other when you're in the change rooms help each other when you're in the classrooms and in the mess look over each other make sure that you know each of you look the same because by you helping them they're gonna help you and that is effective time management the last thing I'm gonna say in this tip of the during depot part is journal yeah, journal. So your week is going to go Monday to Friday, Saturday and Sunday you have off. I put that in air quotes because again, good time management is going to show you that you don't have a lot of time to just sit around. However, if you are a, an effective time manager and you, you adhere to those things in, in tip number two, you will have a little bit more time than maybe the next person. So uh, so with that, you can journal. And journals, journaling is going to help you. I think it just helps you mentally in your life, let alone in depot, but just in life. Writing down your thoughts, writing down some of the feelings. It's also going to solidify some of the things that you've learned. And it's going to bring up some of those um, some of those strategies, some of those the, the new lessons that maybe you, you've learned in, in applied police sciences. And you're going to jot some of those things down and it's going to help stick in your memory because you're going to, everything in depth was building, right? So you're going to want to make sure that you have a good grasp on step number one before you get to step number two. Now, bonus tip inside of this tip number three, do not do anything stupid. Uh, oh, Steve, that's pretty, listen, don't do it. You are there representing the RCMP. You're representing yourself. So if you get the wobbly pops on, listen, I don't care about all that. Do what you need to do. However, if you get two tips and you get too silly and you do something stupid, uh, you will get kicked out of depot. Uh, and for goodness sakes, if you do something stupid, because we all do, I, I can write a book on stupidity. Uh, if you do something that is, uh, you make a decision that's not the best decision, own up to it. Do not lie. Don't do anything to try to cover it up. Don't even downplay it. There's nothing wrong with making a mistake. Yes, listen, your mistake may have a consequence of you going home. That's just the, that's just the truth of it. However, the biggest mistake that I have learned uh, in, in some of the stories and experience of, that other people have had is the mistake isn't the thing that was made. The mistake, the big mistake, was trying to lie or cover up that mistake. So that's a bonus tip. Try to not do anything too stupid. Have fun, absolutely, but just keep your wits about you. Remember who you're representing. So moving on to our third and final category, and that is the after depot. So we looked at the, what do I do before? We looked at some tips of what to do during, and, and now we're gonna talk about what to do after your depot experience is done. First and foremost, you are gonna get a post or a placement while you are at depot. And my encouragement sort of bridges into it while you're still there, but that is do your research on where you're going to go. But when you get there, and by the way, 
When they say anywhere in Canada, I've said this before, I've said this in other videos, they mean anywhere in Canada. So please, if you have this kind of notion in your mind, this is, well, if I don't get this, this, or this, I said, I'm gonna be so mad, I'm gonna quit. Don't even join, don't even apply, because the adventurous, the excitement, the, the, the benefit of the RCMP is that you can go anywhere in Canada. Take the experience, uh, take that adventure, take it on, and learn what it is about your post that's gonna be a, an asset for you and you for it. Uh, so if it's a small rural place and that's not what you're familiar with, get familiar with it. If it's a, if it's a bigger city, it, maybe it's a federal position. Maybe you're not even going to go to general duty. I don't know. You don't know. But that's the excitement part because in the job, in the everyday, we simply sometimes don't know. Everything is coming at you. And that's one of my favorite parts of this job is that when things come at you, it's, it's very exciting to me. It's very, it, it stretches you to learn. So. Tip number one inside of the after depots when you get your post, learn about it. Wikipedia it, figure out some things, make some Google things going on, and uh, you'll, you'll see that it'll pay dividends. Even go, go to streets and maps and kind of have a virtual tour if you can't drive there you know, during your depot time, if it's really far. Have a, uh, have a virtual tour of that community. You won't go wrong. So uh, step number two after you get out of depot is coaching. You will be coached for a six month period. And inside of that six months, there are a couple of segments. So they're basically it's broken down into three segments, your first two months, your second two months, and then your last two months. And within all of that time, you will be put with a coach. In the beginning uh, of your coaching experience, you will be sort of tied at the hip, as it were. You will be on his or her schedule uh, through the whole six months. They are there as an invaluable asset to you. Uh, they can, listen, I've heard stories of make or break a, a, an RCMP career based solely on the coach. So uh, this is a message to anyone coaching, including me, uh, is make sure that you uh, remember your learning style. Make sure you remember the passion and pride that you carry in your job. Listen, recruit, new recruit, do not go out there and start complaining about the RCMP to your coach and, and getting all negative. And if that's your coach, my, my challenge to you is to challenge them. Listen, don't get your back up. Don't go all silly and, and uh, oh, you know, Steve said this on his, you know, don't, don't do that. All I'm saying is be professional, right? This is a job. You have to work hard to get there. Man, you have to go through the application process. You had to get through depot. And now that you've gotten through depot, you are donning that surge. You are putting on the belt. You are, you are a police officer. Take that with pride. So you will have a coach and that coach will teach you all the ins and outs. And by the way, if you hear these words, well, forget everything Depo taught you, I'm gonna teach you the right way. Do not do that, that's foolish. There's no reason why the RCMP are gonna spend tens and tens of hundreds of thousands of dollars on you thus far for information and education that doesn't mean anything because it does. It is your grassroots, it's your foundation, it's the fundamentals of policing. Yeah, the coach might challenge some of the things that Depo has taught because Depo is teaching you a very generalist idea of policing and your coach is gonna be more specific to your detachment and to your detachment area. So for sure, take all that with a grain of salt. However, if you hear the words, forget everything you've learned learned about Debo, I'm going to teach you the right way. That's old school thinking, man. You can just put that aside. But my tip is this, you will be given with a coach and do everything you can to get along with your coach, to soak up all the information and education from your field coach. They are an invaluable asset to you. And uh, if you were lucky like me and you had a solid coach, we are now best buddies. And um, he has taught me more about policing than I thought I could ever really know. And I'm forever thankful for him. And if you ever thought that there'd be two different kinds of people in this world that can be put together and have a great relationship, it was me and my coach. So coaching, uh, it is what it is, but take that six months and learn all you can. Work through the process. There are still things that you will need to do on a coach's or while you're being coached that you will get from depot. There is still homework to do. There there's still uh, assignments that you have to do. There are still uh, benchmarks that you have to reach. Yes, it's not over when you get that badge, kids. It's just the starting. So be, uh, be a good student to your coach and uh, encourage one another to be positive in this outfit. The last tip inside of, uh, of the after depot is to be a sponge. Be a dry sponge. You know when a, when a sponge is without water, it's kind of dry and it's ready to soak up anything. It's ready to soak it all in and to be effective. And that's you. And make sure that's always you. Here's a pro tip for anybody. If you stop learning, then you stop leading. You do not know more than everybody. There are things that other people in their life experience can teach you. I don't care how many years you have on the job. I don't care what your life experience in the past was. I don't care how many chevrons you have on your epaulette. I don't care what color your shirt is. You will always have something to learn from somebody. 
You have two ears, you have one mouth. Like my mama used to say, listen twice as much as you speak. So be a solid sponge and soak up all of the stuff that it has when it comes to positivity in this outfit. You will come across negative clients. You will come across negative members. You may come across negative bosses. Uh, try and do your best to, si uh, to, to siffer out those things. Is siffer a word? I don't know. Filter those things and soak in the good so that you can be a positive role model to your community. This is your career. This is for you. And you're going to make it everything that you want to make it. There's a saying that says you get out of it what you put into it. So uh, if you're anything like me, I want a lot out of my career, but I am prepared to put a lot into my career. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. There are three categories, the before, during, and after depot. And inside of each category, there's a, there's a few tips and strategies that I hope helps you along the way. I can do videos all day long about the depot experience, and I hope that you uh, will enjoy it. I hope that it helps your experience, but at the end of it all, this is your experience. So don't let anyone jade it. Kind of go into that movie, watching it with a fresh set of eyes and think, how am I going to be for it and how's it going to be for me. Listen, always, always beware of your surroundings.